Okay, right. So it's recording now. So basically, today is the fourth session where we take a deep dive on the business model canvas. So for this is actually the last session. For the next session, although tomorrow we'll have a representative from Shell, he's a senior manager for contract and procurement, where he will be sharing with all of you what does it take for you to be uh, to join the Shell supply and value chain. So, but for us, we've looked at design thinking on webinar one, and from webinar two to five today, we've looked at uh, the business model canvas, we zoom in into the value proposition canvas, we zoom out at the business environment canvas, and today we're gonna look at how do you actually apply and, 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 and use all the lessons that we've looked at for the past three weeks to prototype your business model. Prototyping is basically as with what we shared in design thinking, it's all about building so that you can learn whether you're on the right track, all right? Okay, so before we move on, uh, let's just recap, because after five weeks, I think, uh, you know, I think it's good for us just to take a bit of a pause and, and, and reflect what we have learned so far together. And, and if, they, if you require any clar clarification, I think it's a good um, sort of a point in time where you can ask questions so that we can refresh and, 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 and look back at what we have learned, right? If my audio is so low, just let me know so that I can increase my voice volume, right? Okay, so for the first module, we look at design thinking. So in design thinking, we look at the entire process of creative problem solving. Uh, although design thinking can be seen with the four phases or seven phases, we look at a very simple model of design thinking where we start with empathy, understanding the people's need, uh, practicing empathy, putting ourselves in people's shoes so that we can create product that actually customer want and love, right? So that, was the f that, that is the first part of design thinking. Next, we look at after we understand where, what are the pain that the customer are going through, what are the gain or the aspiration that they want, we look at how can we generate ideas. So when in idea generation, it's all about, in the beginning, it's all about quantity over quality. So don't settle on your first five or 10 ideas. Push yourself because more often than not, the early ideas are usually are the, quite the obvious ones. Right? But uh, although I say that, sometimes uh, coming up with a lot of ideas allow you to validate as well whether uh, the idea is strong or the idea is, is something that can work in the market, right? And then we look at prototype, which also relate to the topic that we're doing today. Prototyping comes in with this concept, with this concept of fail early so that you can succeed sooner. So if you fail on paper, it's cheaper than failing once you start opening your shop, start uh, ordering your stocks, uh, or start committing to uh, uh, purchases to your suppliers. So prototype allow you to make mistakes early, make mistakes cheap, and make mistakes fast, right? So don't, you don't waste your time as well. And then we look at the business model canvas and the nine building blocks from customer segment to value proposition, to customer relationship, to channels, uh, where we create value. And then we look on the left-hand side, uh, how do we deliver the value by looking at our key activities, key resources, key partnerships, right? And then lastly, at the bottom of the business model canvas is how we capture value. Capturing value is where and how uh, businesses make money, right? Um, and then we zoom in and focus on the customer, right? When we focus on the customer, we look at the customer profile, right? The customer profile comes in, what job is the customer looking to get completed or getting done? What are the pain they are doing in fulfilling this job before, during, and after? Uh, an example of uh, pain after is could be if they take certain medication, for example, um, there's an aftertaste or there's an after effect. Or if they purchase something, the customer service is quite poor. So that could be a pain post uh, using the job. Right? This can, can be example of if you subscribe to an internet service provider, for example, right? Once you start calling them, then you get uh, our 
customer service agents are all currently busy. Please wait. And then you wait for another five minutes and then they repeat the same, same message. So you end up being on a customer service uh, phone call for half an hour without getting anything resolved. And then for the customer job as well, you want to look at the gain. The gain is if you have a good internet connection with fast speed, very stable, then you get to be more productive, you get more job done, uh, you can enjoy streaming and, and all that, right? From there, you look at how your product and offering can actually address those jobs, pains and gains. So here, there are the product and services, what the customer actually see, does it everything come in a box or they buy the basic one and add on? Uh, how does your product relieve the pains as well as how uh, it uh, create gain for the customer? And then we look at the business environment map. Uh, this module is quite interesting because uh, as per some of the feedback that I received from some of you, uh, it actually opens our mind to that there are a lot more to business than just our product and the customer. Sometimes events happen like COVID-19, you know, so we have to look at how do we adapt under this situation, this constraint. Or uh, if there is no uh, uh, sort of like cataclysm, not cataclysmic, but uh, huge uh, events like uh, COVID-19, sometimes it may just be new competitors coming in or, uh, or, 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 or suppliers thinking that they can increase their price with which increased cost for your customer. Okay, so in a nutshell, uh, Business Model Canvas help you create value for your business. So the focus in building the Business Model Canvas is very much on how does this business create value for the business owner, right? Mm -hmm. And then we look at the Value Proposition Canvas. This is all about creating value for the customer, forget about your business for a while. And then looking at the environment map, it's all about context, right? So without context, it is very hard for people or both your employees, both your customer, or even the community that you work with to understand where is it that you're coming from. So let's watch a video on uh, our topic for today, which is uh, prototyping your business. You can think of a business model like a story, a story of how your enterprise will create, deliver, and capture value. And like a story, it can be one you've heard over and over before. For instance, you can start with what most people are fixated on, the value proposition. Travel for retirees. Then decide whom you can sell it to. Yep, boomers. Sketch in how you'll get it to them. Okay, a website. And how that will generate revenue. Sure, sales fees. You'll make it easy and automated. Next, you figure out what key resources you need to offer all that, like a reliable website and brand recognition. Carl's thinking his key activities will be marketing, website, and maintenance, and then partners will do the booking. And finally, where your costs will come from. Sales, marketing, platform development, all that will cost you. There you go, your first model. But don't expect a medal or a breakthrough. Predictable models can work, but rarely give you a competitive advantage. So don't fall in love with your first idea. To compete in a world where the best model wins, you'll need to think harder and explore alternatives. For example, prototype a model where you give away your value proposition for free. <gasps> this will instantly change everything. You might not find this model realistic, but exploring it will force you to think hard about potential alternatives. As an entrepreneur, you're thinking of your model 24-7. Now you have a tool to structure your ideas as quick prototypes to consider with your team. Who knows, you might wind up with a disruptive model that changes an entire industry, like Skype with its freemium model, or Nespresso, which became a multi-billion dollar business by locking customers into purchasing high-margin espresso capsules. In fact, understanding innovative or simply successful business models in other industries can be a great place to start getting to your breakthrough. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just three rules to start with. First, focus on the business model, not just your product, technology, or service. Second, don't fall in love with your first models. The best models are built on clever, unexpected elements, and that comes from creating many less obvious versions. Which leads to the third rule. Iterate rapidly and test your models early, in the real world. How do you do that? Don't worry, guys. 
We're about to learn all about the real world beyond our canvas. All right. So we look at uh, a bit of recap of what we have learned so far, and then we've watched a video on uh, how does, why is it important to prototype your business and how do you prototype your business, right? It means that one way to prototype is if you change one element of your business model, for example, in the case of the uh, travel uh, agent for uh, senior citizen just now, when they make it free, it makes you rethink everything uh, in your canvas. Although it may not work, it may seem radical, it may seem crazy, but if you do not test, you do not know, right? So sometimes it is through testing, through prototyping, through iterating that you discover disruptive business model uh, that uh, can change how people look at how your product is being offered in the market, right? So we, before we move along, can I just ask a quick question? Anything that you don't understand so far uh, when it comes to design thinking, business model canvas, value proposition canvas, and uh, environment uh, mapping? Uh, do you, have you got any questions? Or is that while you're working on your assignment, there's something that, that, uh, that you know, you, you just have some questions about. Because I, I do get questions like, I'm not sure whether I'm doing the right thing. Uh, and I noticed that when you're working on your, uh, especially your design thinking question, a lot of time, it seems like you already made up your mind on what your product is. You know, I think the key thing here is not to fall in love with your idea yet, right? And, 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 and it's, it's the same, right? Normally, if you fall in love uh, with your first idea, then you haven't really seen like what other possible ideas there are out there. Right? You can fall in love with it, but just look at the world a little bit more, right? So far, okay, from Dennis. All right, if there's no question, let us move on to the subject of the day, all right? Okay. So prototyping your business model canvas. So uh, prototyping is the process of building quick, cheap models in order for you to learn about the desirability, feasibility, and viability of a solution. Again, uh, I try my best to keep all the things, all the webinars that we are learning about coherent so that it's not like uh, isolated or in silo. So here, when we look at prototyping, we can recall back what we learned in design thinking. Desirable means that something that people actually want because if it's complicated, if it's expensive, is it ugly, right? It may not be desirable. Number two, we look at whether your business model is feasible as you build your prototype. Feasible means that you can actually build them, uh, you can afford the technology, uh, uh, the technology is available to you, and if you, have, you need talents, the talent is accessible to you. So feasibility is very important. Sometimes if it's not feasible yet, it doesn't mean you should drop it. It means that you should ask, how do I make this feasible? What do I need to do? Where can I source for these uh, materials or people or, 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 or technology, right? And lastly, whether it's a viable solution. At the end of the day, will this make money? Will this make money on the long run? Because there are many businesses, they follow trends. You know? When people start, for example, uh, doing cosmetics, everybody start doing cosmetic. When somebody starts doing bubble tea, everybody jump into the bandwagon. So think about whether it is viable. One of the reasons why some business are, businesses are not viable is there just simply too many options for the customer out there? The market is saturated and the pricing is suppressed. And in the end, it is a game of who can last longer. So one by one, uh, businesses will drop and die, you know, over time, right? So number two is when you're prototyping, don't be precious about it. It's not about making the perfect business model or the most refined business model. The idea here is just to test so that you know what works, what doesn't work, and build on top of uh, one idea after the next. So here are 
the three lenses of design thinking that I would encourage you to use when you are uh, develop, prototyping your business model. As I mentioned, desirability, feasibility, and viability. So if you capture all three of these, then your business will become more resilient, your business will become stronger. Okay, I got some questions here. Let me just have a look at it. Never mind. I'll address at the end of uh, when we discuss about prototype Narizam and Nisha. Give me a moment. Um, okay, so this is just an illustration. So you build a lot of business model canvas. You can document them. It can be on digital form. You can print it out and sketch it out. Or if you have a tablet like an iPad or a Samsung pad or something, then you can just create many pages, multiple pages of this and just scribble it down. And from there, you can look at which one you think uh, is worth taking to the next level. So in here, you see that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 times uh, 8, right? So there's 96 prototype of business model here. So the person actually chose this one, right? So that's basically what prototyping is. Uh, doing a lot of uh, version of it so that you can test, iterate, and pivot, right? Okay, so I actually like the, uh, this idea. So this idea is obviously a business that has prototype their channels, their value proposition, uh, their, their customer relationship to come up with a very innovative business, right? This business in the, pharma, is in the pharmaceutical industry. It is called PillPack. It is very interesting. Later, I'll share some of the case study regarding this business. PillPack is a new kind of pharmacy. We package your medication and deliver it directly to your door. All you have to do is tear and take your next dose. Managing your medication has never been easier. Here's how it works. Each month, we'll sort your meds, including any vitamins and OTCs, into easy to open packets. Need other items like inhalers, creams, or testing supplies? We can send those too. We'll work directly with your doctors and insurance to resolve any issues. We'll adjust your medication if your prescriptions change, and we'll automatically handle all of your refills so you never have to worry. If you have questions or need to make an update, our pharmacists are available 24-7. Getting started is easy. You'll need your insurance information and a list of current medications. From there, we'll handle the rest. We'll verify your account and transfer your prescriptions to our pharmacy. You'll receive your first package in just a few weeks. Now, you'll never sort your pills, never stand in line at a pharmacy, and never miss your medication again. It's your medication made easy. All right, PillPack Pharmacy Simplified, right? If you look at PillPack, one of the problems that customers have when it comes to medication is, one of them is they don't like having to drive, go to the pharmacy, sometimes they have to queue, sometimes when they go there, the product is not there. So that's one of the problems before they use the medicine. During using the medicine, some of the problem that they have is, uh, you know, they may forgot, right? They may forgot, like, or, uh, have I taken one or two? Was it after lunch, before lunch? Uh, you know, so those are some problems with people who take a medication. And there are many people who are on medication for life, right? People with high blood pressure, diabetes, and all that. So what PIPAC did is they came up with a, a, an, an idea where they can sort out the medication according to the sequence of when people take it. So they put it in a very neat box where you can actually pull it up uh, and the, the system, the very simple system will roll it up and you can tear it. So that's your medication for morning or your, that's your medication for noon or that's your medication uh, at night, right? So this is a very innovative uh, business and it is something that uh, it's very hard for people to replicate because they've created system, they've created customer service processes, they've created like a, a, a linkage with insurance companies so that even uh, the medication can be paid by insurance company rather than the individual themselves if they have that option, right? So if we look at PillPack, PillPack set to make uh, uh, taking medication easier. Uh, they built a new service to make taking and managing medication better, right? So they focus on their end user needs 
and, uh, and, and they were able to create a business that's quite creative and meet deep needs of, what, uh, of the people that they serve. It means that uh, it's, it's a simple thing, right? Understanding that people don't like to queue and go out, understanding that people forget sometimes, understanding that it can be confusing uh, because, you know, one medication is supposed to be at one time, another medication is supposed to be one time. So by organizing the medication according to the, 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 the time where they take the medicine, it actually helps make people life easier because here you see that people are already um, inconvenient right, or frustrated that they have to depend on meds, right? So uh, pill pack, prototype, the value proposition. So the value proposition rather than just selling or making products available, they actually help people to manage and organize, right? And they deliver. So they look at the channels, their revenue model and price. As I mentioned earlier, they are linked to insurance companies. So people just need to sign up once and the system will take care of itself, right? Uh, so they've designed a business that create, deliver, and supported all that offer that they promised, which is making, taking med medicine simpler, right? So PillPack actually grew to an annual revenue of 100 million in over just a few years, right? Because they create value. And I think at one point of time, not long after that, they were actually purchased by Amazon. So that's quite a nice story, right? So they deliver hundreds of thousands of medication every month to help people get and stay well. So any, uh, let me just respond to some of the questions that I saw on the chat group, right? Before we move on to some prototyping tips. So I have Nisha here. Nisha is asking, since I have a current business that I'm stuck in, thinking on how to improve, that's why I have issues with design thinking. Uh, I think uh, the idea here, Nisha, is to forget about your business for a while, just a short while, and think about your customer. Uh, I think you were in the food business, if I'm not wrong, Nisha? Am I right, Nisha? Mm. Yes, uh, drinks, right? So look at what are the pain points when it comes to customers when they are having purchasing drinks. If I may ask Nisha to, to uh, understand your business better, what drinks are you selling? Like Starbucks, so you're selling coffee, right? So look at who your customers are because different customers have different needs. Uh, so if you look at, um, at, at, at Starbucks, right? Part of the experience is actually uh, the environment, the atmosphere, right? You have free Wi-Fi, the sofa was cozy. Um, I think uh, you can take some snacks. So uh, looking at your existing business model, what can you offer that maybe Starbucks don't offer? Or what can you do to at least match what Starbucks is doing? That's one thing, right? Number two, Starbucks also build loyalty. So they create a lot of engagement. Uh, they do their community service where they have a community service board of like what they do. They hire uh, people who are mute and deaf. Uh, that's one value that Starbucks offer as well. And from time to time, they are creative with the offering that they offer. Uh, so, you know, now they have the mermaid ring and they have the rainbow rings. So by looking at this, then it can help you look at how you can evolve your business. That's number one. Number two, rather than looking at what Starbucks have, you can look at what Starbucks don't have. I've seen in Miri, for example, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 like coffee shops where they have board games, they had uh, card games, right? Or, or card games where people can actually spend time and, and play those things, right? So that's number one. I've seen places where there's this place called Wonder Mama in, in Bangsa, where uh, they actually included like a, like a playpen where kids can play while the mother talk to their friends, for example, right? Uh, so there's a lot of things that you can consider, but it's not enough to create value, but you should also promote the value, right? So meaning I have to create a new business model than my current business. Uh, we would encourage you to refine. That means that for, uh, for Shell Life Wire, what we're doing is uh, for you to sort of like look at how you create value. And for Shell, 
in, in particular, they like value that has a community element to it, that has an environmental element to it. Uh, yes, if you're currently operating from home, this is what we're looking at. Uh, if you're operating from home just because of COVID, that's one thing. But if you're operating from home because that's your business model, then we would encourage you to look at a business model that is repeatable and scalable because this is just a starting point, right? Uh, so that's what we're looking at. Lah. Um, but if you, uh, from operating from home, you can actually... Yes, obviously business, there is a cost. Uh, uh, but the idea is, you know, you, you can bootstrap as you are currently, but you don't want to do it like this for 10 or 20 years, right? So the idea here is to explore how can you expand your business? How can you grow your business? Because we want businesses to actually uh, achieve uh, maybe even national or regional or global scale. So that's, that's something that we hope to work together with you because uh, the idea is if you win Shell Ahwaya, you have access to become Shell uh, a vendor, right? And obviously, when you're working from home, a lot of the requirements that Shell have probably will not allow them to work for businesses that is operating from home. So that's something that, that we'll explore. So I hope I answered some of your questions. Uh, but let's look at Narizam Nawawi. Um, he's asking, I need to change the way to focus on what people need, a solution or maybe a product. Yes. Uh, if you look at the value proposition canvas that we've looked at, we look at the customer profile first, and then we look at the value map uh, to, 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 uh, to explore what are the products and the, the features and the quality of the product that we're offering. All right. Mm. Yes. Franchising is one way uh, you can scale your business, Nisha. All right. Uh, I hope I uh, answered some of the questions. Keep the question coming, uh, and I'll try to answer once we transition between one section to another section. But uh, before I, I move on, just a, a, a big uh, point here. I think when you are running a business, you should always look at growing. Because if you don't grow in business, it is a risk, right? If you don't grow, then some, if you're like uh, comfortable in your comfort zone and all that, that is when uh, your, you may, other competitors might come in and steal your, your share of the market, right? So that's why for business, going bigger is always a good option for you to grow stronger, right? Okay, so let's look at some tips if you are looking at prototyping. Uh, if, you choose, if you're looking at uh, prototyping, sometimes uh, don't just look at Starbucks, for example, if you're in drink business. Look at uh, businesses that are in other industries. Maybe you can learn something off IKEA. Maybe you can love, learn something uh, uh, from uh, drinks, but uh, lower down the value, the down, more downstream in the value chain, like Nescafe, right, where they actually produce products that are uh, sold in, 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 in supermarket or hypermarkets, right? So when prototyping, uh, you can consider what other people in other industry are doing. Can you learn something from the automotive industry? Can you learn something from the hotel industry? Can you learn something from the healthcare industry? So as a business owner, uh, you want to grow from operations to more strategic, meaning that start thinking of where and how can I take my business further, right? Number one. Huh? Number two, uh, there's always a possibility. What if my business is different? What could be better, right? Um, in, if, if, I, if, 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 I, if I spend one day thinking about how I can improve my businesses, what ideas can I come up with, right? So when prototyping, don't be scared. Don't uh, limit yourself. Don't put constraint on yourself, right? Try to have an abundance mindset, meaning that you're positive, you're optimistic, many things are possible. So that's always a good quality for, for entrepreneurs, right? To, to, to sort of like have that dream of a better world or a better place. This is very important and this is something that I noticed not all of you, some of you uh, are already in love with your business. My business is so nice. I, I love it so much. I don't want to change, right? So this is actually a problem uh, because 
uh, more often than not, sometimes there are someone or something better for you out there, right? So don't fall in love with the first boy you meet or the first girl you meet or the first business idea that you come up with. Just to uh, have fun a little bit with the example there. But again, I see this all the time, not just with the shallow Y participants, even when if I run program with magic or I run program with, uh, with universities, uh, people tend to be very much in love with their own idea, right? And the problem is, is when uh, your customer are not in love with it, then you're left with an idea and you're like struggling to keep it afloat, but nobody really take notice of your idea, right? Um, I think here, don't worry about making mistakes. Just create a lot of options, create a lot of variety, explore all possibilities. One possibility is what if I offer my product for free, right? Uh, sounds crazy, but uh, we've seen it in some newspaper. Uh, if you're in the Klang Valley, uh, maybe Moses is familiar with this, you have the Sun newspaper, right? The Sun newspaper is a color multi pages newspaper and people can grab it for free, right? So who pays for it? So they created a business model where uh, many people, there's high circulation, maybe 10,000 copies in Klang Valley alone, but advertisers will pay for it because it's free. They can almost guarantee that people will pick it up. They don't mind sharing the newspaper. So even if they print 10,000, the circulation might be, the readership might be 30,000 or 40,000 or four times or three times the printing. So for advertisers spending 3,000 ringgit, that means they're spending 10, 000, 10 cent per, per eyeball, right? So that's, that's a nice business model where it's a win for uh, the business who gets money from the advertiser, the advertiser win because they can reach more people and the consumer win because they get to know what's the latest news for free. So that's an example of one option. Um, other business model could be uh, if you look at Nespresso, you know those uh, capsules that people use to make coffee nowadays? It's quite expensive to buy the machine. But what happens is once you start buying the machine, you have to buy the capsule from Nescafe uh, to, to use it, for example, right? Or Nescafe can actually uh, focus on innovating new products so that people buy more capsules. Um, this is another one. Uh, I think don't spend a week just working on a one model. In actual fact, you can spend five to 10 minutes on one business model. So by the end of the week, if you spend one hour a day, you can actually build five to six a day if you're working five days. So by the end of the week, you can even end up with 25 to 30 business model canvas. So that's what we're looking for, right? They can share the same thing. The customer may be the same, but the value proposition may be different. The channel could be different. One model is, I'm operating from home. Another model is I'm using a delivery service. Another model is maybe, um, uh, maybe I deliver it personally and make the coffee at my, friend, at, at my customer's house. Could be, right? So explore a lot of options and see what works. Sometimes it is the novelty that may make people go for your option over your competitor. Because uh, there's this idea of the, uh, the blue ocean strategy. I, I hope some of you have heard of it, of it. The blue ocean say that when there's not many competitors, so the ocean is still blue, the predator can eat whatever fish that they want. Where else in a red ocean, there's a lot of predators, so it's bloody and there's not a lot of fish to go about. So you want to play in the blue ocean. I noticed in, 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 in Singapore, even before COVID, right? There are a lot of businesses that um, sort of does manicure, pedicure, where they go to people's houses, right? That means that they don't need a, a shop per se. Right? What they need is maybe a car or a transport and, and maybe a, a bag. So they go and people make appointment. So people pay for that premium so that they can get their nails done and their kids can, 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 can run around in the house so the less stress for the mother, right? Uh, next, uh, once you have your business model canvas, you can uh, go and talk to your customer, talk to your friends, uh, have a discussion within your team, right? Get feedback. What do you think? What work? What doesn't work? Is there anything I'm missing? Or is there something that is not clear or uh, you require more information to understand? 
So uh, this is a quite a, a good tip, actually. Yeah. Lastly, don't overthink, right? Uh, although you need to think, but don't, don't be to a point where you're like paralysis by analysis, meaning that because you analyze so much, you're paralyzed, like, oh my God, I don't know what to do next. So you start like worrying and, and, and like pulling your hair and, and sweating and all that. So don't overthink. It's a creative process. Mistake is normal. Just, just enjoy the process. Right? I think that's basically it. So uh, any questions on, your, on, on the subject of prototyping tips? Anything on not falling in love with your first idea? Anything on getting feedback? Have you started uh, doing some uh, business model canvas? What have been your experience? Uh, remember, it is not just filling up the empty blocks. It is basically you applying your creative and analytical brain for you to uncover uh, what would create value that's not available currently or it's something that your potential or existing customer may appreciate. Never mind, you can think about it first. We can pause for a while. Um, Okay, Narizam, that means create as model, this smaller canvas as you can and choose which one is better. Uh, it is about choosing, it's one of them, eventually you have to converge and choose one that you think would be feasible, by a desirable, feasible and desirable. But at the same time, you can actually challenge your business model and actually see what, uh, what, what works and you can actually combine them or, or, or or mix and match uh, to make an offer that your customer cannot refuse or hard for them to refuse, right? The value can be you're affordable because you're small, you're cheaper than other companies, right? Or um, because you're transparent with your pricing, then the customer is, uh, can know that they are just, they're paying for the same thing, it's just that you're honest about your pricing. Uh, other value could be your design, right? That means that uh, I know some businesses, for example, they are, I, I actually have a client who's, hold on, uh, there's some knocking sound, I don't know where it's coming from. All right, guys, sorry about that. As usual, neighbors knocking. Uh, so uh, in a way, it is, it is a, a process of synthesis and, and analysis, right? Uh, okay, Anisha is saying that I'm willing to change. I like the word challenge. That's, that's, that's very good. So don't worry about changing. I, I run my own business and almost constantly, I don't know because I teach business model canvas, I'm always looking to disrupt my business. Uh, the idea here is, I said it last week when we're looking at the business environment, you want to be the one who kill your business, right? That means you don't want others to kill your business because then uh, others will take the market share. But if you innovate, you, 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 you change the game, then in, in that sense, uh, you know, you are actually like a butterfly, you know, you're like from a caterpillar and becoming a butterfly and, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then uh, upper that change actually makes you better, right? All right. So now let's look at constraints. Uh, constraints are uh, important, is a good way to trigger your thinking. 
So uh, in this section, I've actually set out a few constraint questions so that you can actually apply them if you do not have an idea, how can I challenge my business model, right? Nisha was saying the word challenge. So I'm challenging you with these constraints. So constraint number one, how might we generate more recurring revenue? That means that rather than selling one drink to a customer, if you're in the coffee business, then the question is, how do I make people come back again and again? What do I need to change? Do I need to change my pricing? Do I need to change my customer relationship? Do I need to change my channels, right? What can help me to create more recurring revenue? One example is a uh, way to generate recurring re revenue is maybe to give people vouchers, right? So in your next purchase, if you buy one, you get a cookie or you get a, like a bagel or something, right? So that's one way to generate more recurring revenue. The other more common one is probably membership that can create more recurring revenue as well. Uh, other than that is bundling, um, where you might look for another brand and, and if people purchase a t-shirt elsewhere with Moses, then they can come back and buy a drink at Nisha. And they buy a drink at Nisha, they can go get some discounts uh, at, at, at Moses' uh, uh, a fashion label, for example. So this is constraint number one for you to think about. I think for Narizam, who's doing woodwork, uh, he may think, uh, he may ask himself, uh, what, how else can I generate revenue from, from the furniture that I sell? Maybe uh, because you have the facilities already, maybe you can ask people if you have your own furniture and you want to repaint it or you want to, to, to modify it or you want to personalize it, then you can generate revenue from there as well, right? After three years or five years. So that can be a revenue, uh, recurring revenue strategy. Question number two, uh, how could we get others to create value for us for free? So you look at your left-hand side of your business model canvas with your key activities or your key resources, is there a way we, where you can collaborate or leverage on other people who can help you to reduce your costs, right? You remember when you look at your cost structure, there are a lot of things. So can you look at ways where this can be done for free? For example, by using a Google Docs or, or by using a co-working space rather than renting a, 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 an, an entire building, right? Or maybe sharing offices or sharing warehouses. So are there ways where you can create, others can create value for you for free? So that's another constraint that you can ask yourself as you want to prototype your business model canvas. Thirdly, uh, if I want to expand, which strategic partners could we work with to leverage or expand our business model? So, so for example, if you're working from home, uh, could you make a, a deal with, um, you make a deal with, with uh, maybe uh, a, a, like, a, a, like a hospital or a school or a college, right? Where uh, it will allow you to expand in a low cost manner, right? Can you get a discount? Uh, in, in, in KL, I'm not sure in Sarawak, a lot of people actually get six month rental for free or one year rental for free, but they're locked for three years, for example. So it's a win-win, but it's not totally free because when you come in, obviously you have to invest to renovate. So in a way, uh, the, so the mall owner know that uh, you probably don't want to move so often, right? So they get recurring income, but for you, you can leverage on this by having higher traffic, by having uh, uh, access to facilities like toilet and parking and everything that comes with a mall, right? Or not just a mall or a hospital or any building for that matter, right? Uh, this one, you can look at unused spaces. Uh, example of this is um, like lifts, right? There, there's a, you can actually say that if you're in advertising, you say, can I, can I put TV on your lift? Uh, and then maybe uh, share the revenue for advertising. So that way you don't have to purchase a building. You have direct access to uh, working people in a, uh, in a high profile building, uh, for example.
Um, next. Um, how can we achieve more scalability in our business? If your business is currently not scaling, like you're like a one shop operation or you can't do two things at once. So ask yourself, what do you need if you want to scale this, right? Would you need more people? Would you need more capital? Would you need te certain technology? Would you need certain uh, machines, right? Uh, ask yourself, what does it take for you to scale, right? Uh, would you require more branding? Because it's not enough for you to scale your operations if you don't scale your customer base as well. So how do you get more customer if you want to scale? So that's another question. Maybe you need to change your channel. Maybe it's not enough to have a Facebook page. Uh, you need to spend on Facebook ads, for example, or maybe you need to invest in, in, in video consistently, like once every month. So that will, uh, uh, that is another consideration or, or things that might change or pivot or iterate your business model. If you ask this question, how could you achieve more scalability in your business? Next. How could you dramatically increase switching costs? This is quite a, a, a good question because <clears throat> they actually ask, uh, what would make it difficult for your customer to change? For example, uh, because I'm in the B2B business, we already understand our customer uh, and, and then we have worked with them for many years. So the more uh, number of years that we work with them, and we are offering good value in the market in terms of pricing, the more difficult it is for our customer to switch to others. So in your business, um, again, I'm using Nisha as an example here because she's been asking questions on the board, on the chat group. So what would make it difficult for people to switch from your product to others, right? Maybe you have a local connection, like, you know, you are a local, a local hero. So if people switch to other brands, then they are betraying a local hero, for example, right? So at least, or you've built some relationship with them. You're friendly, you know them by name. So that can also uh, increase switching costs for them, right? You know what their favorites are. So uh, those are some low cost, even no cost examples of how you can increase uh, switching costs. Other than that, uh, having things that others don't have, right? Uh, for example, others might not have a great taste of music or the music might be a little bit, uh, uh, generic, right? So you play Korean hit song like Blackpink and all that, maybe uh, that if they people switch, they will lose that value, right? Uh, next, um, again, this comes uh, back to the question of, uh, can you offer your product for free? This is more about challenging yourself. So if my coffee is free, how can I make money? So that allows you to think out of the box and explore other revenue channels, right? Not to depend on just one revenue channel. Are there other revenue channels if I, that I can make money from if I lose from training, for example? Like for example, myself, my main revenue is from training, but if I don't offer training, training, right? So people might still come back to me and say, Azwa, can you help us write articles or can you help us uh, uh, brainstorm or facilitate brainstorming session for our team? So that allows me to not depend heavily on one in case there is anything that is impacting or, or, or I'm seeing a drop on certain revenue, then it allows me to generate other revenue. For Nisha, for example, you may be looking at space rental if you have your own shop or you may even look at catering, right? So those are examples of revenue that you can generate uh, from, from your business, right? So uh, a, a great value proposition should be embedded in great business model, right? Some are better than others by design, will produce better financial results, while others are more difficult to copy and will outperform, perform our competitors. So this is a general idea, right? So it is about designing it so that eventually you can capture the value and at the same time, make it difficult for others to copy. So there some part of your business model, people have to actually analyze and even uh, guess, how did Nisha does this, right? So uh, the idea in developing your business model is to make it com not complex, but uh, unique enough that if they try to offer the same thing, they will actually uh, struggle because you actually have a first mover advantage and you've actually perfected it because you've tested it in the market. So 
uh, my last slides, my last two slides, look at these uh, questions that you can use to assess your business model design. So uh, from a zero to 10, you can look at switching costs, right? Is there anything that's holding back your customer from leaving you? And your customers are locked in for you for several years. This is like the perfect situation. This is a least desirable situation. For example, if uh, you have a contract with your customer, right? if it's a B2B, uh, so if they're locked for several years, then it's a very expensive switching cost. That means that if they switch, they have to pay a penalty or something. Right? Uh, recurring revenue. Are you dependent on one-on-one -on -one sales? Or uh, is there like, uh, automatic way of uh, recurring business like a subscription and all that, right? So this is a consideration when, uh, to assess when looking at your business model. Number one, do you have to spend first or you don't have to spend anything, right? That means that you generate money before you spend. So this is actually quite good. That way it will protect your cash flow, right? So if uh, a prepaid model, for example, is a good way of earning first before spending. Uh, look at cost structure. Compared to your competitor, are you cheaper? One way to be cheaper is obviously to leverage on technology, uh, to have a, a higher uh, productivity per staff. One thing that I always teach a more advanced uh, entrepreneurs, uh, people that are making like millions or hundreds of millions even, is, is to look at uh, your productivity. That means that if I have five or uh, three staff, right? How much money am I making with these three staff? So by having a higher productivity per staff, that means that your cost structure would be quite low because staff is usually quite a high cost in a business, right? Um, are you saving on rental? Are you saving on, on softwares? Are you saving on uh, other, or are you getting a good discount on, on sourcing your coffee beans and all that? So all this, this uh, can help you change your cost uh, structure. Next, um, do you incur all the costs or do you outsource some of the costs? For example, for uh, my business model, I look at how we can leverage um, uh, uh, partners to do the marketing for us, right? That means that we work with large partners where we focus more on what we do best, which is delivering modules. And our partners are the ones that focuses on getting the participants or getting, getting, uh, uh, doing all the promotions around the program, right? Um, so we do support them, but uh, we, we leverage on our partners as well. Uh, six, is your business scalable? Right? Is it limited to geography? Is it limited to uh, you even? Huh? If the business don't have you, then it cannot run. So that will look at, allow you to assess whether your business are scalable or otherwise. And lastly, this is the mode. The mode, I talk about it uh, in week two. A moat is about, uh, you know, the European castles, normally they have a river around their castle with crocodiles and they can pull up their drawbridge. So a moat is something that makes it difficult for your competition to enter your market, right? Is it because your local knowledge, uh, your experience uh, or, or your systems that are quite perfect? So that can protect you from the competition, uh, even your intellectual property or even your, just your personal touch that is so excellent. If people want to do it, they can't possibly do it because they don't train the staff well enough, for example. All right, so here are the seven questions that will allow you to assess your business model design. So with that, uh, we look at the activity. So for this activity, uh, for, the, uh, for prototyping your business, uh, I encourage you to develop prototype several possibilities based on the constraints that I talked about earlier. Uh, constraints like, uh, can you leverage on others? Uh, can you make, how do you make your business more scalable, right? So look at that and come, come up with several business model canvas. And from there, choose one that you think is finally, after doing business model canvas, after doing value proposition canvas, after doing your environment map, after prototyping your business model canvas. This is the one that I think will make me a lot of money, will create a lot of value for my customer, right? So that is the assignment for this week. So uh, let's take some questions, guys. We, let's take about five minutes to take questions because we did start uh, five minutes uh, later just now with our selfie and all that, right? So, so I got one question. 
All right, Nahum. Sure. Um, is our business model canvas need to be, I mean, like, uh, follow the design thinking all the way or should we like, can we change it during like environmental phase? Yep, you can. Other phases? Uh, guys, if, if I can share, right? Uh, basically, what we're looking at, uh, uh, for not, it's not just for the assessment to move to the next phase, but what we're looking at is we want to create value for everybody who are attending this class, right? So the idea here is you have a very strong business idea. That's where design thinking comes in. So your idea is something that the customer wants. Okay. So even when you're building your business model canvas, you still need the same idea or you still need to evolve the same idea. right? So that's number one. So number one key thing to remember is we are looking at you to refine and improve your business idea. Number two is the business model. Business model is what do I need to, what do, I need to do to deliver the idea that I've created? Right? How, what, are, what channels do I need? Which customer should I target? specifically what value should i create um, what are my important costs right in terms of uh, staff or in terms of machines in terms of uh, if, do i need to be central in the city or can i work from home or can i work at multiple places right meaning i have my programmer in cebu i have my designer in kl i have my uh, business development in singapore right so those are the business model takes the idea from just an idea to something that you can actually apply Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, what we're looking at is what is your business idea? What is your business model? So as we do our exercises, we appreciate your commitment in answering all the activities, but ultimately we will look at your final business model as the business model that you are presenting for this program. Okay, it's mm -hmm. the same. It's online now, but even in previous year, it is the same thing, right? Thirdly, uh, uh, next week we'll start looking at... Uh, how do you manage your finance? How do you manage your team? So that comes on the third category where we look at, are you capable of delivering this? Right? So if uh, that is for, 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 for you to present that uh, actually I, I can work with this person or I have this skill. So from there, uh, uh, we have some points, not so high because we know it's still a new business, right? Uh, to assess, but the key uh, marking is with, around your idea and business model, but we consider, uh, uh, your, uh, what do you call it, team capabilities, right? Uh, as one of the criteria to choose uh, who goes to the next stage. And lastly, we look at your communication skills. So on the last part for pitching, we're going to ask you to do a, a short 90-second uh, video talking about your business. So from there, we will assess your business model and how you can communicate. Because for businesses, you need to communicate. You cannot be behind your computer or in your room in the dark alone, right? You need to go out and talk to customers. You need to talk, go out and talk to investors. So all these four will give us a good overview of that you have the uh, psychometric and capability to, to actually be a successful entrepreneur. But or if, you, if, if, if you know as well, then you know where you need to improve. So either way, it's a win-win, right? Um, what's your name? Huh? Sorry, I don't see your name here. Yep. Yep. All right, Thanks. thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. All right. Let's look at some questions. Huh? Uh, Norazita. Norazita. Sir, I've got some ideas. One of the ideas are too high in terms of ringgit. Need to set up Tenun Maker and their things. We've got Tenun Maker and she can open the workshop here to teach the young generation. To be honest, I can see it to be too pricey. But at the same time, they are value for the cottage industry here in Cebu. Don't think I, in order to preserve Tenun itself. I'm just curious about the cost here. All right. Uh, for many businesses, like especially... Uh, new entrepreneurs like Nisha, like Nora Zita, not that new. I know she's been doing her business for a while. Uh, but uh, a lot of time you worry, oh, I don't have money, right? But if you can do your business model, and next week we'll talk about your, 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 your finances, right? If you can show that whoever comes in as a shareholder can make money, then don't worry about that. Come up with your idea, come up with your projection. And from then on, you can think of who can sponsor this. Because from the sound of what you're doing here, Tenun, a lot of high value, and you know that uh, uh, maybe uh, Cebu or the central region needs some catalyst in terms of how they spark, uh, uh, not spark, preserve the culture that is so rich there. So you can just come up with a, your projection. And from there, if you, cannot fund, if you cannot fund everything, you can look at sponsors to fund part of it or even all of it. But it's just about how do you tell the story. 
right? So for me, usually money is not so much of a concern. Uh, I, I've had a friend who raised, I think, 25 million in a month, right? I think it was 25 million. I, I'm not sure. It's in the millions uh, to start to set up like a, a, a college, not a college, like a private school, for example. But what he did was he has his network, he has his projection, he hired a consultant. You know, obviously, if you want to raise a lot of money, you have to make a very strong business case. He paid a consultant um, that did the work for Tony Fernandez when he wanted to open uh, his private school. So he hired the same consultant to help him to develop the paper to make a business case, meaning that this is where the school will be operated. This is how much people are earning at, the, at that area. These are the, the, the number of competition that doesn't exist in that area. So if they open a school at this place, then it is lower risk for them. So that's one example. But there are so many examples of if you have an idea and if you know that there are value either financial, uh, monet monetary wise, financial wise, or in your case, uh, for the greater community, then you can identify who your customer are. In this case, I think your business model could be uh, museums, you know, can get sponsorship from uh, the departments that handles museums, for example. Or you can look at uh, multinational companies that have uh, CSR focusing on uh, helping communities, or even like Shell, even like um, uh, uh, maybe banks, huh? like, like, uh, like, like international banks and all that. So the key thing here is to come up with the projection first so that people know how much they need to spend. Because when you talk about money and you cannot communicate in financial terms, it's, it, it's usually not a good sign for people who wants to invest in you. All right. Now, Rizita, I hope I answered your question. It, it doesn't seem it's going to be that expensive. Uh, I think it's manageable. It's just knowing who the, who the customers are. In this case, I think the customers are the sponsors. And who the sponsors are? They could be the government, or they could be NGOs, or they could be multinational companies, or even local large companies like uh, Sarawak Energy, for example, right? They build all this, uh, uh, maybe they, they, they sometimes need to build across where communities are, are living. So from there, maybe they want to give back. So maybe you can talk to them as well. But the key thing here is to come up with a projection and come up with a strong proposal, all right? Uh, let's take on uh, some more questions. Um, I think it's quite an interesting topic today. Just, uh, so, so one question. One more question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, because you say it's the final the business model canvas, right? Yeah. Is it that business uh, model canvas is like the, I mean, the starting of it, of our business, or is it like the end, end product, I mean, the uh, vision and mission when we target it? Uh, good question. Actually, it is, uh, the business model canvas always evolve. So yeah. what you want to do is, you want to have one strong enough that when you start doing your business or start making changes in your business, that business model is a good starting point, right? But as, you, as, as, I, as we talked about, I think for two weeks already, you never really know until you get punched in the face. Right? Like my yeah, guys yeah, yeah. Right? So once you go to the market, then you see whether the market accepts it or not. But don't give up so early. Sometimes uh, customer, you need more people to experience it from, for, uh, over time before you can really know whether the idea works or not. Maybe it doesn't work for some customer. They just happen to be in your shop or, or purchasing your product or going to your website on that day. But give it some time. Maybe you test it for one week or one month, right? And then you can see what work, what doesn't work. And from there, you can evolve and iterate your business model again. Right? Okay. But don't worry about that. Even if you have your, you submit your business model for this week's exercise, we will only look at the one that you submit at the end of the course as the one that you are going to submit for assessment. Okay. All right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. No worries. Any other questions? Uh, Nadia, Erdi, John, um, Jazira, Azra. Oh. Okay, from me, Dennis, no question today. A bit quieter than usual. <laughs> John, no question. Uh, Yang Rong, Nahum. No questions. Hisham, any question? All right, that's good. You have tested your prototype, response is good. Collect the data. Uh, always look at what you're learning, right? Because in business, especially in the early stage, 
it's not so much about making money. Making money is a good uh, outcome, but the main outcome is to develop a repeatable and scalable business model. Yeah, this is good. Online courses for kids. I think uh, a lot of parents uh, are complaining that there are some weaknesses in how online courses are done. So maybe you can look at how do you make it uh, more fun for kids, right? One complaint I've heard from one parent is, um, is uh, like sometimes they close the chat group so early that the kids still want to talk to each other. So, uh, but that's one of the feedback that I've heard from some of my friends, right? All right then. With that, guys, I don't want to take too much of your weekend's time. Uh, I need you to just fill up this survey. Uh, I will post it on the chat group as well. Uh, you can scan it if you're into all this QR code thing. You love doing that. Huh? Like not enough with the My Sajatra thing. You want to do more. You can do that here. Uh, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Huh? Please uh, don't miss tomorrow's session. It's, it's going to be great. And we're going to do it together with our Sabah friends. So we'll be seeing some of the Shell Hawaii participants from Sabah as well tomorrow. All right, guys, with that, thank you so much. Uh, please, again, don't forget the survey. Uh, we want to know the feedback, whether the module has been useful for you, right? Thank you. Oh, I got one question from Amalina. Berapa tempo disarankan untuk yang prototype? Lebatkan pasangan baru. Sebagai contoh, prototype, perisa baru supaya... I think you want to test early. So, for example, if you're doing a new product, Amalina, uh, the key thing is maybe not to launch your product altogether, but uh, to actually like call maybe five, 10, 15 people that, 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 that uh, meets your, uh, your customer profile and just have them sample it. Another way is if you're, you have a shop, uh, you can actually do like simple samples. That's actually quite effective, but I don't know why people don't use it enough. Ask them to test it. And after they eat, uh, you can just ask your waiter or your, your shop assistant to just ask them, so how was it, you know? Uh, what do you like about it? Is it something that you want, you want us to keep in our menu in the future? So a prototype should not be too long. Uh, you should design it as such that it can be done very, very fast, right? And you get the result very fast as well. So uh, don't spend too long on prototyping. So I recommend, depending on some things, it can be as fast as uh, a week or a month, uh, but don't take too, too long, especially an early prototype. As you evolve your prototype, you can create a more high fidelity. But in the beginning, you want to test cheap, scrappy, and, and, and fast. All right, Amalina? With that, uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I see you guys tomorrow and next week. Thank you. Oh, and stay safe as well. Uh, there's a... I think COVID uh, clusters are all around nowadays. Huh? Stay safe, guys.